Here. Madam Speaker, for some, patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel. For others, it means dissent against a government's abuse of the people's rights. I've never met a politician in Washington, or any American for that matter, who chose to be called unpatriotic. Nor have I met anyone who did not believe he wholeheartedly supported our troops wherever they may be. What I have heard, all too frequently, from the various individuals is sharp accusations that because their political opponents disagree with them on the need for foreign military entanglements, they were unpatriotic, un-American, evildoers deserving contempt. The original American patriots were those individuals brave enough to resist with force the oppressive power of King George. I accept the definition of patriotism as that effort to resist oppressive state power. The true patriot is motivated by a sense of responsibility and out of self-interest for himself, his family, and the future of his country to resist government abuse of power. He rejects the notion that patriotism means obedience to the state. Resistance need not be violent, but the civil disobedience that might be required involves confrontation with the state and invites possible imprisonment. Peaceful, nonviolent revolutions against tyranny have been every bit as successful as those involving military confrontation. Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. achieved great political successes by practicing nonviolence yet they themselves suffered physically at the hands of the state. But whether the resistance against government tyrants is nonviolent or physically violent, the effort to overthrow state oppression qualifies as true patriotism. True patriotism today has gotten a bad name, at least from the government and the press. Those who now challenge the unconstitutional methods of imposing an income tax on us or force us to use a monetary system designed to serve the rich at the expense of the poor are routinely condemned. These American patriots are sadly looked down upon by many. They are never praised as champions of liberty as Gandhi and Martin Luther King have been. Liberals who withhold their taxes as a protest against war are vilified as well, especially by conservative status. Unquestioned loyalty to the state is especially demanded in times of war. Lack of support for a war policy is said to be unpatriotic. Arguments against a particular policy that endorses a war uh, once it's started are always said to be endangering the troops in the field. This, they blatantly claim, is unpatriotic and all dissent must stop. Yet, it is dissent from government policies that defines the true patriot and champion of liberty. It is conveniently ignored that the only authentic way to best support the troops is to keep them out of dangerous, undeclared, no-win wars that are politically inspired. Sending troops off to war for reasons that are not truly related to national security and for that matter may even damage our security, is hardly a way to patriotically support the troops. Who are the true patriots? Those who conform or those who protest against wars without purpose? How can it be said that blind support for a war, no matter how misdirected the policy, is the duty of a patriot? Randolph Bourne said that, quote, war is the health of the state, close quote. With war, he argued, the state thrives. Those who believe in the powerful state see war as an opportunity. Those who mistrust the people and the market for solving problems have no trouble promoting a war psychology to justify the expansive role of the state. This includes the role the federal government plays in our personal lives as well as in our economic transactions. And certainly the neoconservative belief that we have a moral obligation to spread American values worldwide through force justifies the conditions of war in order to rally support at home 
for the heavy hand of government. It is through this policy, it should surprise no one, that our liberties are undermined. The economy becomes overextended and our involvement in world in involvement worldwide becomes prohibited. Out of fear of being labeled unpatriotic, most citizens become compliant and accept the argument that some loss of liberty is required to fight the war in order to remain safe. This is a bad trade-off in my estimation, especially when done in the name of patriotism. Loyalty to the state and to autocratic leaders is substituted for true patriotism. That is, a willingness to challenge the state and defend the country, the people, and the culture. The more difficult the times, the stronger the admonition becomes that the leaders be not criticized. Because the crisis atmosphere of war supports the growth of the, any, of the state, any problem invites an answer by declaring war even on social and economic issues. This elicits patriotism in support of various government solutions while enhancing the power of the state. Faith in government coercion and a lack of understanding of how free societies operate encourages big government liberals and big government conservatives to manufacture a war psychology to demand political loyalty for domestic policy just as is required in foreign affairs. The long-term cost in dollars spent and liberties lost is neglected as immediate needs are emphasized. It is for this reason that we have multiple perpetual wars going on simultaneously. Thus, the war on drugs, the war against gun ownership, the war against poverty, the war against illiteracy, the war against terrorism, as well as our foreign military entanglements are endless. All this effort promotes the growth of statism at the expense of liberty. A government designed for a free society should do the opposite, prevent the growth of state statism and preserve liberty. Once a war of any sort is declared, the message is sent out not to object or you will be declared unpatriotic. Yet we must not forget that the true patriot is the one who protests in spite of the consequences, condemnation or ostracism or even imprisonment that may result. Nonviolent protesters of the tax code are frequently imprisoned, whether they are protesting the code's unconstitutionality or the war that the tax revenues are funding. Resistors to the military draft or even to selective service registration are threatened and imprisoned for challenging this threat to liberty. Statism depends on the idea that the government owns us and citizens must obey. Confiscating the fruits of our labor through the income tax is crucial to the health of the state. The draft, or even the mere existence of the selective service, emphasizes that we will march off to war at the state's pleasure. A free society rejects all notions of involuntary servitude, whether by draft or the confiscation of the fruits of our labor through the personal income tax. A more sophisticated and less well-known technique for enhancing the state is the manipulation and transfer of wealth through the fiat monetary system operated by the secretive Federal Reserve. Protesters against this unconstitutional system of paper money are considered unpatriotic